And here we go. Welcome to episode three of The Huddle, our new show on the Blue Bombers YouTube page. I'm Ed Tate, your host from BlueBombers.com, joined by three-time CFL All-Star guard Pat Newfeld. And we're coming to you live from the Winnipeg Soccer Federation North Complex here in Leela on day three, day two of the CFL Combine. Uh, we're going to kind of chop up all the things that are going to go on here tonight. We'll talk to Patty about his experiences in this and just what the point of all this is for the league and the prospects that are gathered here for all nine CFL teams to take a look at. So uh, let, let's let's talk, let's chop that up right away, Patty, about yeah. the combine and the point of this. So there's 80, 90 guys here, mm -hmm. global players, national players, all eligible for the draft that comes up at the end of April. Testing, interviews, that you and I came from the Hotel Fort Gary where a lot of stuff's going on. Uh, we saw the bench press today we saw the vertical there's I sat in on a one-on-one -on -one interview the bombers did there's an awful lot of information gathering at that yeah. that's what this is all about right absolutely it's to see what kind of athlete you are it's to see what kind of person you are it's to see if what the football operations people and the coaches see on tape mirror up with your athleticism so they're going to go through a series of tests and basically measure what kind of athlete you are and see if it correlates with the film this part is fun the on-field part it, it, let's talk about what we saw this afternoon yeah the, the kind of the sexy events of this are probably the bench press because it's for you know the pure power and then the 40 yard dash which will start here at about seven or so uh, but there's a lot of other ones in there so let's kind of break them down and from your perspective what they are and why they matter to the coaches so much yeah so the first one that we saw today that i saw today was the bench press and it's a straight 225 pounds as much as you can but yeah. There's people there. It's just kind of a surreal thing, isn't it's it? It's crazy. That, the way it was done today. Talk about that. Yeah, today, I mean, at the Hotel Fort Gary, beautiful old hotel. Um, but they had it in this intricate old ballroom with a big stage. It looked like there was going to be a, like a Shakespearean play going on <laughs> afterwards. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And they, they put the bench press right up on the top of the stage. And they had rows of tables with all the coaches, all the football men people scouts, media, there's probably 200 people in that room and you walk up on stage and you see how many times you can clang off 225. Um, coaches and football people want to see how strong you are basically. Have you been training? Have you been in the gym? I, I mean, benching 225 is a, a pretty generic thing to do in the gym, but I think it's generally a way to see if you've been training, do you have power up and, and um, go from there. Yeah. There was one guy that got hurt today or yeah. he did, couldn't finish and it was kind of it was excruciating to see. What did you see on that? You hate to see it. I don't know. It almost looked like he kind of had maybe his, his hip had cramped or something and yeah. he tried to readjust and his shoulder went back and uh, just not good. So uh, you never want to see that kind of stuff, especially at a, a scouting combine. Hopefully he's going to be okay and hope for the best for him. And then right away, they take down the bench, they get the weight off the stage and they bring out the thing to do the vertical jump too. Yeah. Same stage. Same stage. Uh, and let's just talk, but well, that's pretty straightforward too. I'm a ba yeah. I'm former basketball coach, so I know. What that's all about, but you know what? Yeah. What is an old line? What do you, I need to see an old line to do his vertical? For? Ver, yeah, exactly. People think, well, why would why would you need to see an offensive lineman or a quarterback jump? But uh, the vertical is a great test of explosiveness. Um, it, it measures your lower body explosiveness from a static position. Basically, how high can you jump is going to measure how how strong your legs are. Um, there are some techniques that guys use. They used to they used to put your arm up to measure kind of your reach, and then you would jump from there and they would do the the subtraction but yeah. guys would always cock their shoulder down or they'd wear baggy shorts and bend their knees yeah. now they don't have that now they're just jumping up and down so I uh, saw some really impressive jumping a lot of guys jumping over 30 inches a couple of guys in the high 30s uh, pretty cool to see and then right away they, they come all the way out here to the Winnipeg Soccer Federation North to do the 40 they do the three cone shuttle the side shuttle the broad jump yeah let's just run through some of those the 40 I mean everybody sure. that's the kind offense of cool alignment one. the offense yes. alignments <laughs> The, you know, main event. No, the for, the 40, uh, the sexy event at the Combine, what yeah. everyone loves to see, just a couple things. They're, they want to see if you can run fast. Like, plain and simple, they yeah. want to see if you can run fast. But for positions like offensive line, interior defense alignment, what really is going to matter is your 10-yard ten, your ten split. Mm -hmm. um, they want to see how fast you can accelerate past 10 yards because realistically, as an offensive lineman, you're not running really more than 10 yards, same as a, an interior defensive lineman. Usually, if you're running more, it's a screen play or something went wrong. So they want to see that. Um, for other position players like receivers, they want to see you accelerate all the way through your 40 yard dash and see what your top end speed is going to be after the 20 yard dash or the 20 yard marker. Um, 
running backs and linebackers, they want to see you hitting your top end speed. Um, acceleration and your 10 yard split is huge. Broad jump, I mean, I, we were doing that when we were in elementary school. Right. What's the deal there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Same kind of broad thing. Broad jump's another measurement of power. It, it's another explosive lower body movement where um, it, it's derivative of your lower body strength and see yeah. how, how your hips are working, how, how strong your legs are. Uh, another thing for landing is balance and, and your, your impact. So yeah. um, a, a great way to measure that. I'm, I'm reading from the CFL site because they explained all these here. Three cone drill. It says here evaluates a player's change of direction, balance, and ability to get to speed quickly. Yeah. What is the three cone it's drill? Super awkward. So it, it, it looks like an L drill. So they have cones lined up in an L, and they you start in a static position and you run around the shape of an L and back. So what coaches and, and football scouts want to see is how can a player accelerate through these cones, flex their lower half, keep their balance, and keep accelerating all the way through. They, they don't want to see stop, mo stopping movements. They don't want to see rigidity. They want to see nice flow accelerating all the way around this, this cone drill. Yeah. 20 yard short shuttle is another one tonight. That, that's a great one for agility. So you start again in the middle of two cones. Um, it's an explosive lateral movement and they want to see you transition. So it's, they don't want to see slow, deliberate movements. They want to see you explode out of your transitions. Um, great for seeing for DBs, receivers, but offense line, defense linemen too, you have to move really quickly in a short amount of time. So um, just seeing you transition in athletic position. What I find fascinating about all this is that tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they'll put the helmets <clears throat> and the pads on and they'll do football stuff, Yeah. right? And so if I'm a coach, I've watched your film, that's why you're here as a mm -hmm. prospect. That's the part I want to see. Yeah. And so do you think sometimes that we can over obsess on, oh, he only did 22 reps and his his 40 was a 478 when it should have been a 463? Like, are we, do they get too wrapped up on this sometimes? I think sometimes too. I, I mean, people like to nerd out about numbers yeah, and they make, yeah. they make a career out of this kind of stuff and they're scouting and, and all these different things. But I've said all the time, if you can play football, it's going to show up when you're playing football. So this is something new that I never got to do. This is, I think, relatively new within the last couple of years that they've started doing actual practices with plays and coaches there in meetings and seeing if they can take information from a classroom in a quick amount of time in a brand new football language that they might, may, might not have heard before and then go and execute on the field. So that's something I'm really uh, excited to see. Um, Always excited to see offense and defense alignment get after it, especially um, in a co competitive period like that. And um, yeah, it's just something new and cool I think the CFL is doing for their combine. I've seen guys obsess on this stuff, the players, because I think I've been to four or five evaluation camps over the year now, or combines, it's what they call them now. And guys will get, they'll be like really angry that they their bench wasn't as much as their, or their 40, they're arguing with the guy that's doing right. the timer. It's, I've run four, four, yeah. you know, like they're, and they get angry and it, you start to wonder, again, even the players are obsessing on this and what really matters is your film already and then what, like I wanna see how you do against the DB if you're mm -hmm. a receiver. I wanna see how you block a lineman, right? So yeah. it's the stress. I don't think a lot of people understand the stress that a player is under here too. For, for sure, I, I mean, it's, it's the pinnacle of job interviews for a football player. Yeah. And you spend a tremendous amount of time preparing your body to be essentially at your elite most athletic form you can possibly be. So when you spend the amount of time that these athletes do in the gym and training and, and learning sprint mechanics and learning how to jump properly, all these things that you kind of take for granted being an athlete, you're learning how to do it the proper way from, from your trainer or for, for wherever, um, and you don't get the time you want, it does kind of take a bit of the wind out of your sails because you've put that much time in. But I think like in everything, football is a game where you have to have a short memory. And um, if these guys bring that kind of bad energy onto the football field, it might affect them. Some guys have great performances. Some guys have some mediocre performances. Some guys don't perform as well as, as they want to. But like I said, ultimately, if you can go and play football really well, they're not going to care if you bench 22 reps compared to 24 reps. Yeah. Or if you run a 4-6 a compared to a 4-5-2. Yeah. I don't mean to <laughs> undermine the importance of it because I'm nerding out on this like everybody else. I love this stuff. I, yeah. I, I mean, I watch the NFL Combine on TV too because this is cool, but sometimes you just wonder. I remember, you remember Jason Claremont, the receiver? Of course, yeah, I played with him. He, I went to one of the Combines that he was at and he did not test well. And it apparently dropped him down a little bit. I think he still went in the first round. Mm. but. He's Jason Claremont. Like, yeah. if you watched film, he was just, he would eat people up. Toughest, so, one of the toughest dudes I've yeah, ever played with. Yeah, yeah. so anyway, um, let's talk about, uh, you went to the CFL Invitational Camp last year as part of the 
mentorship, CFL program. mentorship program. Yeah, maybe yeah. explain a little bit about that. Yeah, so we got the full meal deal, the, the 4.30 a.m. wake up to go to the Waterloo Indoor Football Complex and set up the combine. First thing, first time I've ever done that, setting up a 40 time and making sure everything's put into place and, and the CFL staff did a tremendous job of um, making sure everything was running as smoothly as possible as you can at five in the morning. Right. Um, a little <laughs> groggy, not a lot of coffee in you yet. Um, and basically getting everything set up for um, athletes from, I think, Ontario, Quebec, and Eastern Canada uh, to come out and get a chance to perform at their highest level and, and hopefully get an opportunity to come to the, the National Cup. Yeah. They, the league had you and Shane Goche speak to the prospects yeah. last, last night, right? Yeah, really cool. What, what was the point of that or what was your message to them? Yeah, so I think it was just a way for the league to have a couple guys who had been through the combine before, who have made a bit of a career and kind of speak their story. And, and my story is a little unique compared to Shane's and we can talk about that yeah. if you want. You can yeah. bring up some <laughs> old memories I think I've tried to suppress. Um, but it, it was cool. It's yeah. It was great to be in front of a room of, of the future of this league and, and um, yeah, I get to tell my story and hopefully maybe inspire someone or or make people laugh at my my expense so you, know, you see you saw it maybe making them laugh is important because I, and i've re referenced this earlier you walk through the hotel today and you just see guys that, like they're, stance. They're, they're, like yeah. stance like we, we were talking about the bench press you could have heard a pin drop in yeah there. so for for me you know i it was a tense room i think people were nervous it's the first first time everyone's kind of together and i i'll tell my combine story yeah. if we, so it, I yeah. went to the, yeah, I went to the combine 2010, and back then there was only 50 guys invited to the combine, and there was a list of extras that would get a call if you weren't if if guys would drop out for whatever reason. So I wasn't on the original list of 50, and um, kind of disappointed obviously, and you know kind of took the wind out of my sails, thinking okay, well I guess I'm maybe not going to be a CFL football player, and if I am, it's going to be a harder harder way to get there. Um, so I didn't take training as seriously as I should have. And that's on me. Um, two weeks before the combine, I get a phone call from my agent saying, hey, guess what, you're going to the combine. And I put down my beer and I'm like, okay, I better, yeah. better get training. So um, showed up to the combine and, and uh, didn't perform as well as I should have. I uh, didn't bench well, didn't run as fast as I wanted to. I'm not fast to begin with, but the 40 didn't help. I jumped pretty well um, and then interviews were so-so. So the, I think the interview process was probably the biggest discrepancy for me where I had some great interviews. I interviewed with Winnipeg and I actually thought I was going to get drafted from Winnipeg. I interviewed with, uh, there was Lapo, Jamie Barisi, and there was another, another coach in there. And I had a really good interview with them. Um, I had a great interview with BC, interviewed pretty well with Hamilton. And then I interviewed with the Argos and the Snapeters. And my interview with the Argos did not go so well. Um, basically I was, in the interview room and the entire brass was in there basically picking picking me apart and forming an opinion of me um, that I wasn't strong enough to be a CFL football player because of how I benched and uh, as we're going through the interview head coach GM Jim Barker gets up walks and leaves the interview and I'm like that can't be good okay I guess I'm not going to be an Argonaut let's get this thing over with and we'll move on uh, I had an interview with the St. Peters same kind of thing um, all their coaching staff is in there. Um, Huff Nagel was in there right across from me. Um, and I'm sitting in a chair just like this. And right next to me is the offensive line coach. So I'm kind of sitting there and I had to turn my head awkwardly and have this really, just an awkward yeah. sitting position. Yeah. But same thing, he kind of berated me about not being strong enough, not taking the game seriously enough. And deep down I'm like, well, no, I, I really do love football. I just yeah. didn't perform that well. I know I can play. Um, Funny enough, two, two years later, he was my offensive line coach with the Riders. So he, didn't, he never brought it up, thank God. But uh, interviews didn't go well, um, but still knew I could play and ended up yeah. luckily getting drafted. The interviews are a weird thing. So uh, Mike O'Shea and Kyle Walters today were kind enough to let me sit, on, sit in on one for nice. a story that I'm going to write for tomorrow on bluebombers.com. Uh, <laughs> uh, just about what the experience is like, kind of a peek <clears throat> behind the curtain. And, and, Kyle, it was Kyle and Mike Miller that were doing the interview that I sat in on. Some of the guys were, they split it up because there's so many guys to interview today. And when the guy came in right away, they tried to make him comfortable. And it was about, you know, your injury history. Have you ever been arrested? You know, just mm -hmm. kind of basic questions. But it was, and this is what Kyle has told me over the years, because I think this is his 10th or 11th draft with the Bombers. 
that it's about making the player feel comfortable and find out a little bit about him. But you hear, hear stories about that where other teams have an approach where we're going to make that guy squirm. Mm -hmm. We're going to put, we're going to make him sweat. And then there was a story a few years ago when Ottawa, when the, the combine was last in Winnipeg, Ottawa put a box of donuts by the door. And when the guy came in, he had to grab a donut and then they grilled him on what, why did you take that donut and what does that represent? That's unbelievable. Yeah. And yeah. so Dakota Shepley, yeah. who, who's yeah. an old lineman, I think he's still in the NFL. Yeah. He had gave a great answer about he picked the most Canadian donut there was. Nice. Like, but like really the, leaning into yeah, the content, but, yeah. So it's weird, and you, it sounds like you experienced the extremes of when you had your Yeah, I think yeah. so. I, and I mean, I, who am I to say what's right or wrong? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I ultimately think with those teams who are tougher in the interview rooms is just they want to see you defend yourself. They want to see what kind of character you have. Do you have your own back? Um, can you be humble enough yet confident enough in yourself to go in there and say, yeah, I didn't have the best performance, but I can do this and this and this or that and that and that. And, um, that's what I told those guys at the, at the combine when I spoke to them. I think ultimately you have to be yourself. You have to be true to who you are. Um, I think coaches can smell bullshit. They're Absolutely. really good at dealing with people and this, this is a people business and they're around a lot of different people all the time. So they're good at finding out kind of who you're going to be pretty quickly. And um, you just got to be yourself. You can't, you can't try to give answers that you think that they want to hear. You just got to be truthful. It, it makes you wonder because it is a it's a job interview, but yeah. I, you know if you're trying to get hired by a corporation, I'm not sure they're going to abuse you like well, that. Well, <laughs> yeah, well that's it's kind of like the nature of the business, yeah, right? It's, right. A, it's a tougher business, but the whole donut thing. Yeah. And I've heard, are you a cat person or a dog person? Yes. That one I've heard too, and obviously I'm a dog person, but yeah. uh, you, you know it's just it's to me it's like why even ask that? Yeah, well, it was like that Super Bowl question: if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? Like, is, you know, right? Uh, what is that? What are we trying to do here? I, I met like I couldn't imagine how they're sitting in a room and coming to a conclusion. Like, do they have a list of trees? Are they arborists? Know. Yeah, they're arborists. I don't know. If you're an I oak, no it's idea. good. If you pick yeah. something weaker than an oak, then yeah, you know, exactly. Watch team. Uh, it's a, it's again, it's such a surreal <laughs> thing, and I'm glad there's fans coming to experience this because this is kind of more of the football part of it. But what we saw yeah. today. Man, I could just, you could just feel the tension. Yeah. Because, again, you said job interview, and the guys are dressing up, too. Mm -hmm. um, Kyle, I'm going to write this in the story tomorrow. Kyle told a great story about uh, Tanner Schmeckel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Last year, the Bombers interviewed him. He comes in in a tweed suit that they said was way too tight. <laughs> <laughs> and his shirt was too tight. His face got all red, like it was going to pop yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. But they loved him. And you, awesome. you're a teammate, I love Schmitt, right? Yeah. yeah, he's a guy that's pretty engaging. And uh, when I first interviewed him last year in training camp, he was the the ultimate, just happy to be here guy. Yeah. But it's weird. You see guys, you know, uh, in one moment they're wearing a tweed suit, and yeah. then a half hour later they're peeled down doing the thing. They're in the meat market. Yeah. yeah. It's, there's an underwear Olympics part of this too. Oh, right? We yeah. forgot that. There's yeah. the height and measurement. It's thing crazy. Where you strip down and they, people are looking. Oh, look, he's got big calves. Or it's unbelievable. Here. If you were just a random civilian to walk into that room, you think it's the most insane thing you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. A bunch of people sitting around looking at a dude in his compression shorts. Like it's absolutely <laughs> insane. And I, I mean, I, I don't know if it's just they do it for tradition or if they just really want to see the physical makeup of of the player, but. Uh, Man, if you want to talk about being intimidated, talk about going up in your underwear in front of uh, a group of CFL teams. Yeah. Josh, do we need to take a break here? We're good to roll. You, you want to keep rolling? Josh wants to keep hearing about us talking about guys in underwear. <laughs> okay, well. That's uh, right. That's, that's what I'm here for, sitting in the booth. <laughs> Let's talk about how even in, so 2010 was your combine yeah. year, right? Draft year. The first combine I think I covered was at the Golf Dome in 1993. It was Mike O'Shea's year. And, I mean, it was so basic compared to this. Yeah. There wasn't much football stuff. And the thing that jumps out to me the most is that to feed the players, they brought in one of those little kitty wagons and they had those <laughs> tiny little McDonald's cheeseburgers all stacked up on a wagon. And can you imagine you bring that in and say to about 50 guys at the time, here's your supper. No, that's unbelievable. And, and now we've come to, again, Hotel Fort Gary, the yeah. timing, the, the, the stuff that's going on here today, yeah, it's, it's really changed. It's first class. I, I mean, they've done such a great job. I mean, I, th I think as offensive linemen, we wouldn't mind a couple yeah, cheeseburgers. cheeseburgers. <laughs> Maybe not right before the 40. Where's the wagon? Yeah, pull up that wagon, <laughs> you guys. But uh, to see how much has changed, to see how high class it is, you know, first class, top quality of everything. I mean, I was talking to you earlier about now that they're including force plates, which I yeah. think is something really cool. Yeah, explain that. What is that? Um, 
So force plates are plates on the ground that measure output from jumping, from a, or essentially from a, a static position. So you can press into it, you can jump off of it, it'll measure and give you metrics on hundreds of different markers from the way you land, how much pressure you land on one foot, how much force you're pu putting through the ground, the speed of your jump, how high you can jump, all these different metrics. And uh, I don't think there's a better way of really essentially measuring how powerful a lower half body well, of an athlete there is. So <clears throat> The force of your landing can can reveal it's, it's, what? It's, a, it's just another metric, like how well you land, how much force you can take and create. And, yeah. um, you know, as offensive linemen, especially being static, yeah. how much force output you have through the ground is insanely important. So um, really cool to see that. And um, the, the company who is running it shared some pretty cool statistics how I think the top 25 guys from the draft class this year were in the top 25 percentile of the NFL combine. Oh, wow. So okay. seeing that is just proof that, you know, our athletes in Canada and the Canadian athletes playing football are world class. You yeah. know, it's really cool to see. What do you remember from your combine about once you got through all that stuff and the team's giving you a hard time in the interview about the on-field stuff? How did you yeah. do in that? That, that was uh, a 180 for me. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Again, like I said before, I knew I could always play football and that's what we're here for. We're here to play football. We're not here to bench press. We're not here to broad jump. Um, so try to get after as best I could. Um, we had, I think the coaches from the Argonauts were running it for each position group. So we kind of went through a warm up uh, and then our individual periods. And then we went into uh, pass 101s and it was only pass 101s. We didn't do run 101s for offensive line, defensive line. And um, it was awesome. You know, you got to go out there and compete against guys from across Canada and um, had some wins, had some losses, played some different spots on the line. But that, that to me is, more important, right. you know. You know, and I know they don't do that in the NFL Combine, but I think uh, you know the CFL is trying to be a little more cutting edge and, and see actual football. So for you, when you win a rep, mm -hmm. and you're probably so cranked up after the interview, are you kind of? Did you see that sort of thing? <laughs> no, I'm not like that. I'm <laughs> okay. not that kind of guy because I, I I don't think I've ever done that. But yeah. you know, it's a little fe feather under your cap, and it's like, yeah. hey, like I can do this despite not performing as well as I did. So <clears> for <throat> a guy like you, are you lining up? And let's say there's a guy from an NCAA school. You're thinking, hey, this is they're you know they're, they're yeah. I've heard about this guy. They're probably thinking I can't measure up. Is there a little bit of that mano a mano for sure? Stuff to yeah, that? there there is that competition. Although I think. I don't think we had NCAA guys, okay. yeah. uh, offensive line, defense line, maybe one or two. Um, but again, it's like we we're so comparable that I'm like, well, like, wh what's the what's the hype on these guys for a lot of it? I, I mean, you see guys coming out of any school in Canada that are measuring up with guys that come out of big NCAA programs, and you know, it's it's damn near the same. Yeah. Do you know, when? This starts and the old linemen start to do the 40. I saw you training a couple of weeks ago at the other so soccer contest. Oh, yeah. And you, yeah, and you, you're getting Speedy. It. You're speedy. speedy you're getting it, man. Getting it up and putting it down or whatever they say. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's exactly it. Will you uh, keep an eye on the old linemen in their 40s? Or just... mm -hmm. Ten-yard dash for offensive right. linemen. You want to see them coming out of their stance and you want to see that ten-yard burst. You want to see them accelerate and basically hit their top speed rate at ten yards. Yeah. Um, anything more... I mean, it's it's yeah, it's nice to see a guy run yeah. a four nine or a five flat as an offensive lineman, but really, it's not that applicable. Because, yeah. like I said, it, that's not our job. It's not what we yeah. do on the field. The only time I can remember some of you guys running forty yards is maybe after a touchdown, running into the end zone for the hop, jumping right? up into the yeah. into the crowd. So yeah. maybe maybe I'll get back to training forties just for the hop. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Listen, there's there's part of this that I know fascinates you because I think you. This could be something for you to do down the road, right? I think you're mm -hmm. a football guy. Wouldn't you Love say it, you're a, yeah. life, a lifer? Absolutely, hopefully, yeah. Is there something for you here, too, that you're kind of, like, in a way, stockpiling I'm information trying, for yourself? I'm trying to information gather as much as I can. So, uh, actually, I was talking with some some guys I used to play against that are now into coaching roles and, and football operation roles. Uh, J.C. Sherritt, who's now the linebacker coach yeah. with, the, with the Riders, and Larry Dean, who's now in football operations with the Riders. Um, some guys who I chatted with, and it's just cool to see guys who had great careers transition into this league because this league is great, and it's a, it's a, a tremendous opportunity to keep, keep involved with football in the league that I love. So hopefully I can keep learning. I've been asking Kyle, I've been asking Osh, I've been asking Ted, all sorts of questions trying to see what they're seeing and, and kind of understand what they're using out of this combine to help our team get better. Yeah, one of the cool things about it being in Winnipeg for the, the rest of the week here is the staff is way more involved than it would be at a, a combine yeah. in Toronto or Edmonton because <clears throat> Mike Miller is here, a new special teams mm -hmm. coordinator. Buck Pierce is here. 
Marty Costello, the O-line Yeah, coaches. Marty's doing the O-line yeah. stuff. Ted Gavaya, assistant GM, is here. Mike and Kyle, they would be at the Combine regardless. Yep. Um, there's a lot of people involved here, and it, it, it gives the Bombers maybe not a, a, an advantage, but more eyeballs from our team watching prospects is mm -hmm. not a bad thing. Can, can always ask. And, and one, one of the, the cool things that I remember um, Eric Neuville with the league talking about is everything's kind of being evaluated, how you treat all people, how you treat staff, how you if you keep a door open or mm -hmm. if you're picking up after yourself. So, you know, I'm sure there'll be people that'll say, hey, this guy was an asshole to me or yeah. this guy was polite or he was a good person, that kind of thing. So the more eyes and ears, I think, is going to help. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that came up, uh, kind of circling back to the interview thing, and Kyle has talked about it a lot, Mike has too, you're the guy that's in the room, but they talked about, that's a good dude. Mm -hmm. That guy will fit. That's a good dude. And we hear all the time about the culture in the room. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think, well, every team's going to have some kind of culture. Why are we, why is this different? And yet, I guess if you reinforce it all the time, that guy might be a great player. But he's not going to get along with our crew. Maybe mm -hmm. talk about that because there have been draft picks in the past, and I'm not going to name names, that walk into the room and you thought, that guy's not going to make it through training camp. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what, what, it. What's, what's the good dude factor that Winnipeg looks at? I mean, it starts with Osh. It's, yeah. It starts with him every training camp saying, we're going to win with good people. And I mean, it's a people business. No matter what you talk about, it, there's athletes, there's front office people, there's football operations, but ultimately it's a business about people. So how you interact with people on a daily basis, how well you get along with your coworkers essentially goes a long way. So talking with Osh and other coaches, it's are they going to fit into that room where we, we've been doing this for a long time and we kind of have that set core values that have kind of propelled us forward and the way we do things, the way we handle things. Is there going to be a ruffling of the feathers? Are they going to mm. come in and um, have a big ego and not back it up? Or are they going to, you know, do something that's going to upset the herd kind of thing? Yeah. And, and there is there is a little bit of that here and there. And, and what our I think our team does a great job of is allowing players to deal with that and not having coaches come in and infiltrate the locker room and, and trying to put their hand at things. It's Osh is very trusting of us and afforded us the accountability to make sure, hey, like, this is your guys' room. This is the way we're going. You guys got to deal with this stuff too. So um, entrusting us in that, I think, is a two-way street. And I think as a core group of guys that we've had of, of veterans, you know, we've done a pretty good job of being like, hey, like, this is a great dude. Tanner Schmeckel's a prime example. Yeah. He's a guy who came in from Regina. Um, shout out Regina. Hometown, but not really. Um, <laughs> came in from Regina and wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, like yeah. not knowing, doesn't know what he doesn't know kind of thing. But knew he wanted to be a, a bomber, yeah. was doing everything he possibly could to fit in. And by the end, like by the end of camp, he got in guys respect mm -hmm. and guys knew that he was going to be a bomber because of the way he practiced, the way he played, how he went up in front of the team and sang his song, which we have rookies do. And, and um, it's just a way of endearing yourself to us as a group. You have to sacrifice a bit of yourself to let us know that, hey, I'm willing to do that on the field for you. Yeah. So it, it's, uh, yeah. it's a great thing. You know, there's there's so much of this is, as much as there, it's about information gathering, there's so much of this is an, in an exact science too, isn't it? Right. Because what, what, what round were you drafted in? Third pick of the fifth round. Yeah, so yeah. you're three-time All-Star, and there's guys above you in that draft that aren't in the game that maybe right. didn't play a snap, right? Yeah. So as much as teams focus on this stuff and the 40 times and the interviews they get it wrong too you get it wrong you hear it all the time you hear guys about hey like i love this tape we saw you know he tested extremely well like we drafted him in the second round and then he shows up and it's like where was that like where mm -hmm. where is this like where's yep where's that 40 speed on the field and why isn't he playing like this and like you said it's an exact science so i think as much information as you can gather on a player, because yeah. there's, there's, it's a business side of it too. There is dollars and cents involved and you don't want to be wasting money on a guy that's not going to perform for you and, and ultimately sometimes it doesn't work out. Josh, I want to leave a little bit of a window here for fans to ask questions, right? Yeah, we still got time here. We still got about, uh, we're talking about 15 minutes, 17 minutes. Okay, cool. Um, but that's a good, that's a good uh, reminder. So we're actually going to take a minute here to, to give away a Pat Newfeld jersey. What? To someone hang out in chat. We don't have it here in the building, but it is at the stadium. Okay, I was um, going to say, did you blow the dust off of that thing or what? Oh, no, it's, it's fresh, <laughs> hot off the press. Oh, nice. Um, so if you're hanging out in the stream, we're going to be giving away a, uh, a Pat Newfeld jersey. 
and uh, all you have to do to uh, enter to win that, you have to be able to come pick it up at the bomber store, um, at the ticket encounter, and all you have to do is on the live stream in the chat, uh, put Newfeld in chat, and then we're going to pick someone uh, uh, randomly to win uh, that jersey. And while we're hanging out, waiting for, for those to start flying in, um, we had someone in chat talking about how um, they want to hear about your experience in university compared to the pros yeah. and how your coaches specifically got you ready for the pros just based on your, you know how you played in, in college. Sure. Uh, so why don't you talk a little bit about what it was like uh, playing in college and then how did that translate over to the yeah. pros? So I played at University of Saskatchewan. Um, I got there in 2006 and they kind of gone to a bunch of venues and hadn't won any. So um, still kind of the upper echelon of college football then. Um, we actually lost the 06 Vanier to Laval that year, and our running back coach, Jason Hogan, oh, yeah. was the backup quarterback. Right. So I will never forgive him for that. <laughs> but um, uh, back then, that's when they never had the, the new seven-year rule for youth sport players. So we had guys that were playing five years of junior football, right. redshirting year of Huskies, and then playing five years of Huskies. So I was coming into a college football team where there was men who were 25, 26, Did you play 27 years old. Eason? Uh, no, no I just had missed him. I okay. think his last year was 2005, yeah. and he was like 31 years old. <laughs> but we had we had an offensive lineman on our team who was 30 years old. Wow. And I was 17, and I was like, what the hell did I get myself into? So very – and I came from a small high school, and we're driving up a small private high school where we were, we were a good football team for one year and didn't know what I didn't know and came into the Huskies and got, like, my ass kicked every day. Mm -hmm. But um, – I want I, again. I, it kind of started my passion for football, and our, our coaching staff was f phenomenal. Um, I played D line my rookie year, actually, and uh, that winter, our head coach Brian Towers, after my rookie year, was like, "You know what? You're probably going to be better off if you become an offensive lineman." So I said, what, "Whatever." What, what was the? Why would he say that? What What happened that he? I what don't know. Did he see? Yeah. Okay. I don't. know. Maybe he saw greatness. Ah, that's. Or maybe he, I just sucked. At, maybe I just sucked too much at D line. <laughs> Whatever it was, uh, it worked out. So thank you, BT. Um, so he moved me over to offensive line and um, yeah, took some licks that year because I'd, I'd never really played offensive line. Um, and then by my second year, I started starting. Um, third year, I went to the East-West game and uh, it was tough, man. Like we, college football was tough. We, we practiced really hard. We practiced in pads every day, full mm -hmm. pads, which was totally different than it was it is in professional football now. Um, I remember two days in the August heat in Saskatoon, it was pretty hot and, and harvest was coming around the corner so it's getting a little dusty out there and oh, right. um, it's hot and we do the old school morning and afternoon practices so you'd practice at nine in the morning for two and a half hours a couple hour break go back out there and practice you'd be just worn out wouldn't you you're just tired and, yeah. and but you're younger but you're still tired and, and um, going against grown men who are 25 kind of kicking your ass was tough but uh, taught me a lot about grit and, and toughness and competition and um, I remember getting drafted and going to rider camp and what blew me away mostly was the speed of American guys. Like there was not a lot of Canadian guys that could run like, like American dudes. And kind of like the shiftiness and quickness of defense alignment. I'd say they're twitch. Um, not a lot of guys were twitchy like some of the dudes that I was in camp with. And guys weren't even making the team, but they were coming up and I couldn't tell you where they're from or who they were, but just twitchy guys. I'm like, I never played against anyone like this in the Can West. So that was the one thing that I learned really quickly is like you got to move your feet as an offensive lineman you got to stay in front of guys but i went back to school after my first year of rider camp and going through that training camp made me a twenty thousand time better football player mm. i was actually i became an all canadian that season um and i strictly uh related to being through rider camp and, and getting my ass kicked and coming out on the better end of it so yeah. um the one thing that the U of S really helped me transition with though was my technique. Um, we had I had two offensive line coaches at U of S who um, were really adamant about our offensive line technique. So we would drill for hours each week on our individuals on proper technique, and it was the minutia of it. But it's still stuff that I use today. So that um, that has really really helped me um, still to this day. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm going to jump in here. That was awesome. That was a, such a such a sweet answer. Um, but we do have our jersey winner, and it's uh, it's Michelle Polinuk, P-O-L-I-N-U-K. Michelle, congratulations. Congratulations, you Michelle. Won, you won the Pat Newfeld jersey, so that'll be at the uh, the Bomber Store Ticket Encounter for you to pick up uh, starting tomorrow. Um, and uh, that was such an awesome answer. And we actually have a bunch of more questions that rolled in. That's so cool. we're just going to hit some more, uh, some more fan questions really quick. Um, and the first one is from uh, someone by the name of Chris K. I I don't know. Is that this, Chris Kolinkowski? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. But I, but his question uh, is, 
How does he get his beard to look so full? Oh, man. Genetics goes a long way. Uh, Viking stock. Uh, maybe a little beard oil. And... Uh, so you Just two guys clean. could be in Vikings. We were talking about this before. We I think so. There. Chris doesn't have the height for it, Kolonkowski. He's got the beard and the look for it, but like just on a mini scale. So if Chris, so if you're watching. He could be in the same scene as you then. Well, he could, but it, they would have to do like the, the, the difference of space like they did in Lord of the Rings where they made people far away so they made them look small. Chris would have to do the opposite where they make them look tall. Or he could have the Tom Cruise bench that he stands yeah, on. Yeah, or just massive platform shoes for Chris. So okay. Chris, yeah. He's got a chance there. Our next question uh, comes from BJR, and, and they say, what's your favorite Costco item to fuel the game day? Ooh. Costco <laughs> item to fuel questions. the game day. I mean, my all-time favorite Costco item is chocolate-covered almonds, but I wouldn't use that to fuel for game day. I don't know, probably, like, chicken. <laughs> like, you have to tell us again. You said this on a podcast recently that we did it yourself and Darren Cameron and I about your post-game Cheat meal. Oh yeah, the golden arches. There's nothing better than earning double cheeseburgers from McDonald's, much like they wheeled in on a wagon uh, at the old combine. Yeah. But I, it's like, man, it's a guilty pleasure. You just went through like 25 car accidents in the course of four hours. <laughs> I'm gonna like reward myself with a couple cheeseburgers and a couple of beers. A so. couple of cheeseburgers. There's a couple, what? maybe three. Okay. This uh, this this next one it's it's quite the doozy. I mean, you might have to get into this. I didn't know this was a calculus or algebra class, but this is really this is a challenging one. Um, this uh, this fan says, uh, "Who has better abs, Zach Kolaris or Stanley Bryant?" And that's Stanley. that's from Stanley Bryant. That, oh, that's Stan, one hundred percent. That's Stanley. Stanley uh, for years has said he will have abs by training camp, and every year he follows through. Every year. Way to go, Stan. How has he managed to stay out of the camera? Stanley? Like, yeah, because that, that's not public. That, that hasn't gotten out there. And him being so large, like physically staying out of the camera is pretty hard to do. I don't know how he's done it. That's a, that's a tough question. I'll, I'll ask him later. Uh, Mike Goodchild wants to know if you'll be at the Combine tomorrow because he has a camo jersey that he wants to get your signature on. I will be. We what kind of jersey is it? Camel jersey. Oh, yeah, we were it's, talking about the yeah. Digicam jersey. I'm surprised they still have those. I thought, like, Wade set fire to them. And we were never allowed to speak of them again. But uh, I kind of like those jerseys. They were the most comfortable jersey I think I've ever worn. Yeah. But um, there was no gold on them. No, that was. So mistake. I don't know whoever designed them. Kind of missed the, the whole blue and gold part of yeah. the blue bombers. But uh, yeah. hats off to whoever uh, made them comfortable. Yeah. But I will sign it if if he's around. Beauty. Um, this uh, this next fan, um, Jake Thomas, wants to know who you get confused with most on the team. <laughs> I actually have a good story about this. Okay, well, did the, all these guys are chiming in here. It's all beautiful. My all my buddies. Yeah. So Jake, Jake and I, this happens all the time where people think <laughs> I'm Jake and Jake is me. Really? So I'll give you two examples. One time, uh, my partner and I, Paul, were walking into Ikea just to do a little shopping. And this little chubby kid comes running up to me and he's like, oh my God, are you Jake Thomas? <laughs> and I said, no, I wish. I'm Pat Newfeld, and he went, oh, <laughs> he walked away. Uh, so that humbled me. Yeah. Uh, the Why second did you one, tell him that story? Who? That, you should not have told Jake, Jake Thomas that Because people think Jake is me. Okay. So right. Jake, this happens to Jake all the time. So the second one was I was at the McConnell Irish Dance evening on St. Patrick's Day a couple days ago, or last week, and I was standing up against the wall, and a, a little fellow walked past me, and it said T. Kennard on his Bomber alumni jersey. I'm like, oh, that's Trevor Kennard. And then I was chatting, I was standing there wearing a brown jacket with a bomber logo on it. And he walks up to me and he says, excuse me, is your name Jake? And I'm like, no, it's Pat Newfeld. And he's like, oh, I know who you are. So it happens all the time, and, even to bomber alumni. And uh, <clears throat> um, we'll have to have Jake on to talk about times he's been mistaken. Well, maybe Jake and I should get a segment, some sort of uh, who's who segment going on. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll, Josh, make a note of that. That will be a future show down yep. the road. I'm, write that down. I'm writing that down as we speak. Um, Casey Jones wants to know how hard it is. This is a little more, little more serious question. Um, he wants to know how hard it is to adjust to a new member of the O-line, specifically oh, with, with Yosh leaving. Um, yeah. What's that like uh, for the unit to adjust when you got a new person coming in to start working with the unit? That's a, that's a great question. That's like a football operations level question. Um, man. Where to start? That's uh, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, first is is he physical? Our offensive line room prides ourselves on being physical, so we'll 
we'll see that pretty quickly in individuals, how they're coming off the ball, um, how they're hitting people. One-on-ones and inside run are, are the big ones. But are they a likable person? Did they fit into the room? Are they selfish or are they willing to make fun of themselves and put themselves kind of on blast to yeah. endear themselves to us a little bit more and, and um, understand kind of the dynamic of the room where we have some guys who've been in our room for a long time and not that we're dictators or anything like that, but um, you know, there's a certain hierarchy of our room and it's just, can you kind of figure it out on the fly and, and not be selfish uh, and ultimately is it. That was a good question. I want to build on it a little bit because it was a very <clears throat> good question. You say you, you're looking for a guy that's physical. Yeah. I watch a thousand football games. Every old line tries to be physical. What shows up on tape that you'd say, it's not what we're after? I mean, what would that be? A lot of times it's, it's what we call finishing. And it's, it's seeing what happens when the whistle's blown. Are you, are you shoving a guy as the whistle's being blown? Are you getting guys on the ground? Is there, is there bodies on the ground? We, I mean, for the longest time, we would, me, me, Stan, and Yosh would be talking about Hell in a Cell, WWE wrestling. And I mean, it doesn't sound like football, but there's times where we go out with a mindset where it's going to be like Hell in a Cell out there, and we're going to, we're going to go out there and just try and get bodies on the ground. And, and I mean, you can't, you can't make a tackle if you're lying on the ground. Right. So we, we just want to play physical. We want to get under guys' skin. We want to be chippy out there. We want to, we're going to play to the full extent of the law. So we, Osh does a great job of telling us the rules. He also does a great job of informing us who the referees are and mm. what kind of penalties they throw. So, really, okay. um, you know, we're very aware of who's calling and who's standing where. And, um, yeah, it, it's it's just, it's the hallmark of what we've done over the last eight years with this program. And um, I think it's it's done some great things for us. How are we doing, Josh? Great, we're doing great. Um, we're just wrapping up here. I have one more question, and then uh, we're going to hit the plugs, and then we'll hit the outro, and then okay. uh, and then we're going to be out. But the last question um, yeah. is, uh, who has a better barrel, Jake Thomas or Chris K? Who asked this? Chris K. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Chris is just feeling so left out. I'll give it to Chris. Chris has the better barrel. That thing is unbelievably round and firm. It's like a turtle shell. I don't know how he does it. Uh, the oh. guy, the guy eats more cheeseburgers than anyone, really? and that that stomach is as hard as his railing. It's unbelievable. So, great question. You Amazing. Get the, I get the feeling that some of these guys are gathered around the YouTube channel right now with a wobbly pop open. Yeah. I shot. hope they are. Yeah. I yeah. hope they are too. for sure. Um, that's so awesome. that's uh, that's kind of all the time we got here. So I'll throw it to you to wrap up, Ed, okay. and then any plugs that, that yeah, Pat's wanna, got as well. Before we get to to our farewell sort of thing, let's just take one quick peek. I know training camps like less than two months away there are changes yeah but the core is still here what's your i mean everybody gets excited at this time of year but this team's been to four great cups in a row uh i think a lot of people think it could be five in a row mm -hmm. so talk to us about what you sense right now with this squad i think it's going to be one of the more if not the most competitive training camp coming up in my opinion just because of like you said some open spots on our team mm -hmm. uh, we have open spots in defensive backs backfield defensive line uh, offensive line so there's going to be some serious competition which um, is always a great thing in this sport so really looking forward to that and, and being a part of it and <clears throat> especially on the offensive line with two pieces gone um, it's going to be interesting and it's going to it's ultimately going to come down to who plays and executes the best. So uh, camp is going to be competitive, and I think that's going to fuel us going into the season, um, hitting things on high. You know, really looking forward to our offense and, and some of the things that Buck and Marty and, and Jay and, and Bergs are going to come up with. And uh, obviously having Zach is always huge for us, and having Brady back is huge, plus our receivers. I mean, I could go on and on about the people on our offense. So just as a unit, really excited to get there. And um, we say it every year, but we're going to hit the ground running. Uh, we're a veteran group. Uh, we know what it takes to get to that spot, and, and uh, we're going to start playing fast and physical. They're just warming up out here. At about 7 o'clock, they're supposed to start, so fans that still want to come down, they can probably come down here. we got to be off here so that the CFL is live streaming on their website. CFL.ca can get going here. Can't thank you enough, Pat, for helping Thanks, buddy. people under myself to understand what's going on all this week in the Combine. It's fun for kind of draft picks yeah. like you and me and CFL fans. So. Uh, we appreciate fans for the, for checking in on the, the huddle. Remember to like and subscribe on our uh, YouTube page. 
Uh, our next show will probably be uh, April, end of April, around the draft. We're not sure if we're going to do a draft preview or a draft wrap yet. We'll have more details as we get close closer to that. So thanks again for tuning in. Appreciate you, Patty, and uh, thanks very much. Pat, you got any, you got any plugs you, you got for the folks? <laughs> Can't think of anything. Uh, McDonald's, if you're watching. Send a couple of double cheeseburgers over. I'll always take that. And, in a uh, wagon. Yeah, in a wagon. Yeah. Let's get a red wagon out. And uh, as always, thanks for the Bomber fans for, for supporting and watching. Uh, best fans in the CFL. And uh, can't wait to see Princess Auto Stadium rocking. Well done.